Alright guys, take a look at some of the biggest games coming in 2024 and 2025, starting with Ghost of Yutei, which has been officially revealed and is the sequel to Ghost of Tsushima, only 300 years after this first game. Of Japan. People come north to disappear. And now, every ronin here is after you. Still think you're the hunter? But I remember how I felt. Father told us to hide when they came to our house. Then, then they took him away. Mother said I couldn't play outside anymore. Everyone had fled. She said the country was sick. But we would be okay. Mother always said monsters didn't exist. I thought they lived under my bed. We were both wrong. They lived inside our heads. And yet your destiny 
remains unwritten. I choose you for you to be clean. Up, we have Ghost Recon Project Over coming sometime in 2025 and is said to be a return to source with a first person perspective. It seems Ubisoft has understood what made Ghost Recon great, but I'm still skeptic. The game is forced to be a squad based military tactical shooter, almost milsim like in nature, that will also take inspiration from some of the leading first person military games, including the Modern Warfare series, Battlefield, Squad, and Ready or Not. Project Over is set during the Name and War, which is located in a hostile southeast country that has seen hundreds of thousands of people die as a result of war crimes. It's understood that the plot of the game evolves around the ghosts, your team, infiltrating the war zone to carry out secret missions and to locate a traitor. The game appears to take every inspiration from the Modern Warfare series, with some potential dark or controversial missions and segments. One mission, for example, shows your squad nearly shooting a man holding a baby because they thought that the baby was a bomb, but they realized this at the last second. The game is also supposedly very beautiful looking with intense and absolutely brutal action. I'm excited for this one.
Belarus can be nominally divided into two parts. The left one is where people have established their settlements. New communities appear there, as well as new trade routes and conflicts. This is where the main storyline unfolds, and PvE locations are situated. You will start here. This part of Pioneer is an adventure game with minimum MMO elements. We put a lot of efforts in our level design and use the best practices of narrative in dialogues. Moreover, we've created a special game mode where other players cannot interfere with you or your party playing. Oh yes, quests can be completed single-handedly or with friends. You can even have a dialogue with an NPC as a party. Explore the regions and gather info about the world and its mysterious past. Rest in any of the settlements, spending time in bars or playing mini-games. Trade for resources and try to gather as much as you can. Pioneer has progression levels, and after each level up, you get one skill point to spend on upgrading your character. This can make playing easier, but without creating builds, you won't have that big of an advantage on the battlefield. Yes, your armor and weapons itself are quite more important. Upgrading and efficiently using your equipment is what actually shows your progress through the game. Like certain monster slayer, a skillful character in Pioneer needs two guns, one for killing monsters and another for punishing teammates or, rarely, other players. You can enhance your weapons or modify your equipment on the workbench, but every step of it consumes resources. Weapons can be modified more comprehensively by upgrading a submachine gun to a machine gun, for example, or by just adding modules which increase your weapon stats on the move. Upgrading the most interesting and powerful equipment demands unique blueprints and resources. And that's the catch. The rarest of the loot can be found only on the right part of the island. The right part of the Pioneer Island consists of two regions, the Midlands and Shadowlands. These territories are home to PvPvE zones and clan wars. The gameplay here feels more like survival. Another player encountered here is likely to be an enemy, and the local creatures are decidedly more dangerous than ferocious. These two regions lack quests and are much less forgivable with regard to the players. You can lose all the resources you spend time and effort gathering. At the same time, your death in a regular PvE zone will cost you just some polish on your equipment and a little bit of your pride. Your typical gameplay on the right part of the island looks something like this. You're gathering resources or joining your clan members to seize the production point. When you've gathered enough, you're trying to reach a safe zone using one of the suggested paths. Along the road, you're exploring some more unexplored places. Also, there are no guides on the right part of the island, so no fast travel for you. By the way, fast travel in Pioneer is possible with the help of the guides only.
AAA action adventure John Wick game has been confirmed and is currently being pitched and beginning the actual stages of development in some shape or form. And we've got every single details on it, including an exclusive rumor from a source of mine on who might be its developers taking the ring of this John Wick experience. Now, by the way, before you tell me in the comments, the scenes that you're seeing on screen are not from the new or any John Wick game, as there is literally no game out there that 100% looks like a John Wick game. So I'm taking some lookalike here and there. Now, if you didn't know, this ambitious John Wick game was already in the talks months and months ago, in 2022 during an earning calls of Lionsgate for example, which Lionsgate owned the John Wick IP, where it said that executives at the film studio have been fielding proposals for a new video game based on the Keanu Reeves action series. Rumors included the developers of combat games Saifu, Ubisoft and Remedy. This would have to be a truly big AAA game, the executives said, but at that time, they shied away from sharing any further specific specifics due to the pending nature of the discussions. I don't want to get ahead of myself here, but we believe there is a big AAA game to be made out of John Wick, they said. We have been fielding proposals, we certainly are interested in moving that forward, but I don't want to say anything more about that at this time. Now today, we finally have confirmation that this new John Wick game is coming and that they're actively taking pitches from gaming developers around the world and every single dev has a lot of enthusiasm around around the IP. Devs rumored to include Slow Clap, creators of Sifu, Ubisoft, Remedy and a lot more devs. This is coming from a source of mine that has been in contact with me through email for about a year now and has been right one time out of hey two. There. So thanks for coming out. We've got a bit of an infestation here at the storage facility. I thought it was just rodents, but there's something else in here. Nests. They're everywhere. We tried to take care of it ourselves, but things have escalated. The exterminators are our last hope. Please, help us before.
That's what I call a dramatic entrance. There's a reason why I'm called Killer Bean. It's because I'm good at what I do. Really. Really. Good. I used to be an assassin for the Shadow Agency. An international organization powerful enough to shape the world. Until they lied to me and tried to kill me. Now, I'm gonna destroy them. <laughs> You're the gosh darn idiot who wants to take down the Shadow Agency! <laughs> well, it is sure nice to meet you. Before you die... They made me who I am, and I will make them pay for it. before something else breaks. Lights are back on, that's good. Leave the shelter. Over the mountains. Across the deserts. Go east. Some friends. Be powerful.
mission. Find a new dawn. Do you hear that? The clock is getting closer and closer to 12 o'clock. And the world will disappear with the sound of the last chime. Dark times await us indeed. Soon vengeance will take shape. And in the name of the Father, the seas will be stained with blood. Line was born out of a love for horror, tactical shooters, survival games, and immersive sims. We felt that there was no game out there that would quench our first for such a blend, so we decided to set out on a mission and create a unique blend like that ourselves. We were fans of all things psychological horror, creepypastas, liminal spaces, urban legends, cosmic and analog horror, we got it all. In our world, the paranormal creatures and events are called the anomalies. They leak to our dimension through rifts in space and time, causing all sorts of issues for the humanity. Inspired by their incredible imagination, we started working with some of the best SCP creators out there. They already started contributing a ton to the world and depth of the lore. We played hours and hours of multiplayer survival games and we loved the exploration challenges, but grew tired of starving to death every few minutes. We want the core of the experience to be the preparation for the journey, not the desperate search of Paris. What we also missed was the tactical angle of that experience. That's why we are preparing a choice of realistic arsenal and tactics that you can choose to hunt down and fight the anomalies. You will need to survive in a war-torn environment, cut off from reinforcements or supplies. You can venture out alone or take your friends with you. The game is designed as a four-player co-op, but you can complete it and have fun as a single player with a spare artificial body, we call it the Hus. We encourage players to cooperate, to survive, hunt, build and fight together. We love open world games, where the environment feels like it has a life of its own, not waiting for the player to progress. We are building a vast open world, driven by a true emerging gameplay, with unpredictable events, ensuring that every encounter is a fresh challenge that can be solved in a number of ways. In the next demo you will venture out into an open world in a four-player teams. So join our Discord to stay up to date and be among the first to play it. Thanks for watching. How did it feel to learn the truth about the night sky tragedy? Long ago, you humans slaughtered each other until the whole world lay in ruins. And yet, you have been granted another chance in Aurora. It must be the will of your beloved mother goddess. However, I still have no trust in your kind.
prove yourself. If you survive this trial, perhaps you might become one. Of us. So we have Project 007, which is sounding even more ambitious every single time that we receive new details on it. Keep in mind guys, we're talking about a James Bond game being created by the makers of Hitman. They actually know what they're doing here. And this original James Bond story feels just like home to them. And we'll be seeing 007 go across the world in perilous missions a la Hitman, but more stealthy and a lot more grandiose. You'll be able to do missions in your own way, but different than Hitman because, well, Hitman is a cold blood killer at its core. In a new interview they said that working on this new James Bond game feels organic from a development standpoint because of the past work on the Edman franchise. They said it's going to be a very cool, very awesome project that every single people at the team is passionate about and excited to show to the public. They continue on by saying if you look at what we've done in the past with Hitman, 007 just feels organic for us because we've done, you know, stories about agents doing things. It's so close to our DNA story that it just feels seamless and everybody i mean everybody's so excited and they want everyone to be excited as well they made sure to mention that they're really looking forward to talk more about the game in the future hopefully this year the game will feature a wholly original bond story that has players step into the shoes of the world's favorite secret agent to earn their double status in the very first james bond origin story